Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news and transfer news. Uh, we're going to be talking about strikers today and some encouraging stuff, but I am in despair because I've just seen Rio Ferdinand has retweeted or quote tweeted Sauna Gezer's club announcement with eyes looking down on it. And I'm like, Rio, Rio, do you not seriously realise this is not a joke? There are United fans out there who seriously think Sauna is going to announce he's moving to United on Thursday. And Rio Ferdinand is there going, ooh, eyes on it. I mean, come on, Rio Ferdinand is not stupid. He's a United legend. He's the ex, you know, he's a pundit. He's a clever guy. He's very good at marketing. And he is just feeding the flames of these, what I would I'd say is ridiculously naive fans who think we're signing Sauna Gez for the millionth time. He cannot announce he's joining Manchester United or any other club on Thursday. He plays for Atletico Madrid. They've still got their season to finish. The transfer window isn't even open. And his release clause is over 100 million euros. And he's on a massive long contract. He is not. And also, he respects Atletico Madrid. He is not about to do that to them and announce his new club on bloody social media. So, God... I don't, I don't think, I think people, I think Saul Niguez and Rio Ferdinand, they probably all think it's a great big laugh. But seriously, lads, there are people who are really pinning their hopes on this. And it's not going to happen. It's sad. It's sad how many people are going on about Saul Niguez to United. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's all a big, we're just being taken like mugs. We may as well, like, may as well put a big coffee in our, on our head and, and drink it because the mugs we are. But look, anyway, seriously, back to real football. Um... The Times also spoke yesterday uh, about, uh, or it might have been over the weekend, about Manchester United. Despite Agarlo signing an extension, they are still going to push ahead uh, with targets. And they mentioned the names Timo Werner and Muslim Belli. Now, this is quite positive news for Tuesday morning that, you know, Agarlo is going to come in, but United still will look for a striker. Um, I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. I, I, you know, this is my opinion and I always like to give the other side because that's important because what I say isn't always correct, as we know. And I don't think United are going to sign another striker at all in Agarlo. In fact, I'm talking to my man today, so hopefully we'll have some update for the 8 o'clock show tonight. Um, and this is the person who I've spoken to over a couple of years and I did a show about seven weeks ago about the Sancho stuff, which was two weeks before we had Romano on. Same sort of information. So I should have an update at eight o'clock tonight uh, about strikers and other positions, etc. Um, the position won't have changed on Sancho, but there might be something on something else. But I don't think we will sign another striker. I don't know what you think. Get in the comments, let us know. I don't think we'll sign another striker. I think keeping Agarlo is basically a way of well, we've got a backup striker now. We can spend money elsewhere. Maybe a little bit more money is available for Sancho if we need it, whatever. I don't see us going for another striker. So although this article in the Times is saying that United will push ahead with another striker, um, I don't believe it. However, let's pretend I do believe it, and, and I know a lot of you will believe it. What sort of strikers are there available? Because there was an interesting statement yesterday in relation to Victor Ozerman of Lille by the, uh, I think it was the president of Lille, saying that they've had lots and lots of clubs interested, and of course that pricks the ears up of Manchester United news outlets, etc. I like the look of him, and this, but, but what this does is, this really emphasises how many strikers are available around a certain age group at the moment that would perfectly fit with what United need. Now, you could even go Edouard at Celtic, who I think is early 20s. You know, he'd be a good striker to bring in. You've got uh, Osman at Lille. You've got Muzan Mbele at Lyon. You've got Timo Werner at, at uh, Leipzig. Um, there's the lads who play for Munchen Gladbach. Uh, there's a couple of strikers there. Is it Turam and uh, Play? There's lots of young strikers out there at the moment that Manchester United could be looking to bring in. Um, and you know what? The market is broken as well. So it's like, you know, Osman at Lille, probably £50 million before the lockdown, maybe £30 million now. So there are some fantastic young talent at strikers. And I say young talents, they, they're not like potential. They're not a striker that you buy and that, oh, they might be good. They've proven themselves and they're ready to take a big step up. Now, of course, they could flop. Anybody can flop. But it's an amazingly rich market of talent out there if you want to go and buy a striker, which is part of why I wish we really would, because next summer this market won't be like that. 
And a lot of these strikers, I think, will be gone. I think Werner will be gone. Musa Dembele will be gone. Uh, I think Osman might be, obviously be gone as well. I think a lot of these strikers are going to go. And what are we going to do? We're going to keep Agarlo till January, who then will be gone, or will extend an, his contract at 31 and a half for another year, which, again, is just not long-term. And what I say is, I love Agarlo, I really like Agarlo, and I think he'll do a great job. But are we not trying to win the title in the next three years? In three years' time, Agarlo will be coming up for 34. Like, you know... What, what's the longevity of that? And people will say Greenwood and Martial, but I still don't think it's enough. Rashford's proven that he's a left winger. He's not a striker. Um, Greenwood and Martial are strikers. Yeah, OK. Sancho comes in. Dan James. I still think you need another striker. And I think United have got an opportunity here this summer to go and get one. Um, and I like, I've got to say, I do like Victor Osman. Now, there are... this this The reason I like this player is because he's rough around the edges, but could become one of the best strikers. And what I envisage happening, I see Chelsea getting Wizard Dembele, I see Liverpool getting Timo Werner, and I see someone like an Arsenal or a City or a Spurs getting Victor Osman, and we don't get a striker. So, But why do I think Victor Osman would be good? Because, again, he plays in the French League, which has had to cancel their league. So loads of money been lost in the French League, and French, French clubs are going to have to... Um, cash in on that. So I think, you know, and it's not just with strikers. Lille have got Babakari, Samari, uh, obviously Kamavinga at Rennes. There are lots and lots of good French uh, players playing in the French League. Um, now, Victor Osman is actually a Nigerian striker, 21, not 22 till December. Really interesting striker. And what I like about him is that he's quick, he can finish really well, but he's actually really good in the air. I was reading about him this um, last night, actually, and Paulsen, who plays for RB Leipzig uh, and Denmark, very, you know, when you think of Paulsen, and I think of Paulsen on my FIFA career mode, bloody shit, um, tall striker, very good in the air. If you look at Osman's stats, he wins as much or more aerial duels than Paulsen does. So when people think of Victor Osman, and some of you might not know about him, they think about quick goal scorer, but he's actually very, very good in the air. Well, hello, Ollie. Um, you've just gone and got yourself a striker that ticks a lot of your boxes because... We know that we've been linked to like Haaland, who's good in the air, but also quick. Um, if you tend to go for a striker that's good in the air, you're going you're gonna to have to lose on the pace. But Victor Osman actually would offer us something different that Martial and Rashford and Greenwood don't offer. Like None of those players are particularly good in the air. Victor Osman's very good in the air, but he's also very quick. And I mean, his weaknesses, and this is where I talk about the rough around the edges, his weaknesses is build-up play. But that... That can be worked on with the likes of Bruno and Pogba and hopefully a Sancho and a Martial and Rashford. That that can be worked on. He's a very good finisher. His positioning's good. He's very good in the air and he's very quick and powerful. I think he is exactly the sort of player that Manchester United should be looking at. And look, I'm not obsessed by Werner. I'm not obsessed, obsessed by Muzzard and Bele, But I am obsessed by United bringing in another striker because I think we need strength in depth. This season, I've said it so many times... We went into this season and we let Lukaku and uh, Lukaku and Sanchez go. So we went into this season with Rashford, um, Martial and, and a 17-year-old and a a Greenwood at the time. Where are we now? We've added a Garlo to that. So we've got four strikers now, but we haven't really. Rashford's not a striker. He's a left winger. Mason Greenwood, um, I think, is fantastic, but he's still only 18. And actually, I think Greenwood still will work off the wing for a couple of years better than he does down the middle in, in the bigger, you know, against the better teams because he's got to learn that. And I think off the wing, you can do that better. Agarlo, brilliant backup, Martial and number nine. So, but one of the one injury to one of those, especially Agarlo and Martial, and we're thin. And I think if you did ask add an Usman in there, and Agarlo's here till January, you've got Agarlo there for the experience. You've got Usman there to 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 sort of feed his way into the Premier League over the first few months. And then in January, Osman, uh, the, um, Agalo goes, Osman stays. And what a great thing I'm going to add in here. You know where I'm going with this. Agalo's a Nigerian legend. Osman is the next new thing. What a brilliant thing to bring Osman over with his icon, he's an idol, an icon, Agalo, to pass over the baton and say, look, I'm here with you for six months to settle you in, and then I'm off back to China to make my millions. You're going to take on my role. I think it would be perfect. I think it would be absolutely perfect. So perfect, I don't think United have even considered this, but it would be perfect. You'd get him for 30 million. He's got the aerial ability that a Werner and a, and a Musa Dembele haven't got. He's got the goal-scoring ability they have got, and he's got the, he's got the pace they have got. And... And he's also Nigerian, so Agalo and him are going to be, you know, a great relationship for six, seven, eight months. 
where he can learn from him. Agalo goes back to China and we've got Osman. It would be the seamless transition. Um, I'd love United to do it. We'll have to wait and see if they do. Um, sticking with France, again, Spanish reports are saying that Manchester United have made numerous um, inquiries about Camavinga. Good. And I, I really do think United, I don't know what you lot think, I really do think United should be, should be focusing on France. France and the Premier League have had a great relationship for years and years and years. There's loads of players that have come over from France and done very well that, play, that people didn't know a lot about, maybe. Um, and now, this summer, I think with what's happened to the French League, they're going to get decimated, unfortunately. But also, they're going to survive off the Premier League and other leagues because the French League's going to need money. The clubs in the French League are going to need money. And... We can use some of our money to help those clubs out and take some of their better players because they've. The, people say, "Oh, that's taking advantage," and it is to a certain extent. But they can't keep these players; they need money to to keep going. So they're going to have to offload some players, uh, and I think that's where United definitely should be uh, focusing on. Um, please subscribe if you're new. Top right hand corner. We're on that road to 700k. Uh, share the video if you have subscribed. Click the share button. Share on Twitter and Facebook. And if you have joined us new today or you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button. Bottom right hand corner. We're getting very close to 700,000, which would be a great thing to do on lockdown because it's been, it's, I mean, from a, from a United standpoint of view, the community's just been great. But the growth and everything, to be able to hit 700K and keep growing on lockdown is testament to the community that we've built here. So thank you, everybody, about that. Really, really appreciate it. And as I say, subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Can't do it with that hand. And uh, share it if not. Smash a like on the video. Right, let's talk about Chiesa. Italian reports are saying that Chiesa of Fiorentina uh, Fiorentina uh, are realistic to the fact that they're going to have to move him on and they would be willing to reduce the fee a little bit. Um, talking around sort of 60 million, 70 million euros, 60 million euros. I mean, Chiesa is a good good winger, um, very good winger. And um, if Sancho was off the table, I would be looking at a player like that. I put my hands up and say that. But I've got to be honest, we do talk about it a lot. You ask it a lot. I've spoken about it a lot. What's your alternative if you don't get Sancho? At this point in time, especially now that we've kept a Gala and we probably won't sign a striker, I think it's absolutely essential that we get Sancho. I don't think the dis I don't think we should even be having the discussion of what's the Sancho alternative. If we don't get Sancho and he ends up at Chelsea or Liverpool or Real Madrid or anybody, or even stays at Dortmund, there's going to be a massive, massive cloud of disappointment over Manchester United's fans. And look, and I think it's different. I think it's different. Even it's different to go... Like I knew we were in for Bruno Fernandes last summer and we, we messed it up and we had to go back in in January. I think two or three years ago, we pretty much knew we were going to get Griezmann and the Atletico Madrid ban made him morally stay there. We've been close to big signings when we've been into a summer transfer window before and they've not happened. This is different. This is an English player who is young, who is one of the best young right-wingers in the world at the moment and who fits Manchester United like a glove, and we fit him like a glove. We're, we're perfect for him, and he's perfect for us. We can only mess this deal up ourselves, and there's two ways we can mess this up. Financially, which will be on the board, or on the pitch by not getting top four when it's easily in our grasp. Well, I say easily. I don't want to dismiss the fact that we've not had a great season, but I think with the players we've got back, the players we've brought in in Bruno, the running we've got, and the two shots we've got in the league and the Europa League, we've got to have Champions League football. If Oli delivers Champions League football, which I think he will, the board have got to deliver Jadon Sancho and we will get what we were expecting. And I don't think it's... I know there are United fans who, who will be worried because of our past and how we can mess things up in, in relation to transfers, but it's not unrealistic to expect this deal. And I think if we don't get this deal, it will be a massive, massive blow because it's not unrealistic and we're not living in a dreamland. There is... <laughs> Look, I've been told it, you've seen people on this show say it, you've seen. You've read it in other outlets, you've read it from other credible people. This is a deal for Manchester United to do. They only really mess it up themselves and we, we, we need to get that deal done. So talking about Chiesa's or alternatives, I have no passion for it if I'm absolutely honest. I've got no passion for it because to not get Sancho would just be disappointingly bad. It would be like, you know, when Ronaldo leaves and you bring in Michael Owen, it's, it's just... It's crap. So it's got to be Sancho for me. There are alternatives and Chiesa is a good player, but I don't see it happening. We've got to go and get um, the player that we need to get and that is going to have to be Jaden Sancho. Um, right, we are going to be back at 8 o'clock tonight, so don't. So make sure you watch the 8 o'clock show tonight. I'm speaking to my guy today, so I should have updates on uh, a couple of, uh, uh, well, certainly around Werner and uh, there's something else 
I think I'll have an update on as well. So the 8 o'clock show tonight, uh, join me live for that. And we've got Flex and Rants at 1 o'clock. So please smash a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Remember, we could, you know, we could do it today. If people keep sharing the video, smashing the like button, and, um, and subscribe in bottom right-hand corner, we could hit 700K today. But it's going to be a cracking show at 8 o'clock tonight. Um, I normally only speak to my guy every couple of weeks at best. So uh, we'll see what we can find out today. And uh, Flex and Rants at 1 o'clock. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And, of course, Mark Goldbridge, that's football, FIFA career mode, uh, Champions League quarterfinals this afternoon. See you soon. Thanks for watching.